Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth. Um, this section is the part two of chapter 14 on acids and bases. In our book, it actually starts on page 452. And there's a couple of different theories of how you would tell if it's an acid or a base. The first one we talked about in the last video, just barely, we talked about the Arrhenius definition, that that's if it had a hydronium or a hydrogen ion, it would be an acid. And if it had the hydroxide ion on it, then it would be a base. It doesn't quite describe things well enough because not everything has got a hydroxide on it. Not everything has a perfect, I mean, lots of things have H's on it, so you question whether or not you had an acid or a base there. So this Bronsted-Lowry definition is stating that acids are um, proton. Remember, we're talking about protons. That's just an H. All acids have an H on the front. Anyways, um, all acids have an H on them, so they're a proton donors. And all bases accept that H, so they're pro proton acceptors, and then they are considered as a base. So we're going to look at a couple of different explanations of that. But here is a reaction. Um, we've got hydrochloric acid, HCl. We've got water. We're going to put the two together, so you're actually just diluting it. And when you dilute hydrochloric acid, the flask gets very hot. Sometimes, even if I put just eight milliliters of acid, the hydrochloric acid, in a thousand milliliters of, of water, it gets almost too hot to touch. Okay, so when that occurs, that means that there's a reaction happening. So what's happening? Well, this is going to create this hydronium ion and the chloride ion. So I kind of have a little um, things here showing that. So what's going to happen is that it's going to pluck this H off, and now you're going to have this hydronium ion. And now you're just going to have the lone Cl. Okay, and remember that these are ions, so they'll be in the ionic form. And so now we need to ask ourselves, well, what is what are the acids and the bases in this? Okay, you know the hydrochloric acid is an acid. And all acid-base reactions, an acid is going to react with a, a base. And it's just that simple. Water is amphoteric. Okay, and that term will be coming up here in just a moment or two. And amphoteric means that this can react as an acid or as a base. So um, since this right here um, is an acid, it's going to react with a base because these are all acid-base reactions. And so um, sometimes that's difficult because you got to figure out, well, what is water? Well, it depends what it's paired with. Okay, so then once this reaction occurs, this H is on here. So this right here is the hydronium ion. The hydronium ion should be pretty obvious because that is a definition of an acid. Anyway, so that these two right here will be an acid-base pair. Okay, acids and bases are identified upon whether they donate or accept the hydrogen ion. So we talked about that. Okay, and then now we use the term conjugate. Conjugate means that it is a pair. It, it goes with another part. It's just lost a single part. Do you notice how the chlorine and the chlorine, that they look a lot alike? There's just an H that's different. Here, these ones have got oxygen. They look just a little bit different. It's an addition of an H, of course, which all of these will be that factor because these are the certain type of Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions where they're either accepting or donating a hydrogen atom. So when I look at this one, I know this one's an acid. That's definitely an acid because that's a hydronium ion, and this one will be a base. But on the right side of the equation, from the acid and the base, we call it a conjugate base and a conjugate acid. Okay, let's look at another one. Oh, I had these pairs marked. Sorry about that. I explained it how that these right here would be the two most similar species here, and these two right here would be the most similar species. So those are the conjugate acid-base pairs. Conjugate means pairing or something like that. I can't remember specifically, um, but it does mean pairing. Um, it's also used in blood work too, where things congregate together. So so it's, it's it means pairing. Okay, let's look at the same exact reaction up here with the ball and stick type uh, models. Okay, so here's the hydrochloric acid, okay, and here is the water. Here is the hydronium ion and the chloride ion, okay. So if I would go and give you this type of formula right here, no matter how the, these two are messed up in the front or these two are messed up in the back, okay, they won't be switching, by the way, uh, you could identify what water is by what it's reacting with. In this case, there's an acid, so this will be a water. Now, this is not always the same for everything. 
So if you go and you look at this right here, um, the arrhenius base is a substance that produces hydro hydroxide ions in water. That's not the best um, way of how they depicted it. So if you would look at this one, you would say like, hey, there's hydrogens on here. This one must be an acid. You know, and you'd think like, hey, what about this one? I mean, what, what could it possibly be? The arrhenius definition is not good enough for this. So we need to figure out what donates and what um, gives up those electrons. Okay, so let's just look at this bottom one here alone. Okay, the acid is the proton donor and the base is the proton acceptor. So look at this. It's actually going to swipe one off of here and become NH4+. plus. So now there's just an OH over here. OH. Okay, this is the true definition of a Bronsted-Lowry um, experiment because it um, really shows the proton accepting and donating. The Ar Arrhenius definitions were not clear about ammonium like this. Anyway, so I myself, if I was a student, I would think like, oh, I know which one this one is. It's a base. It's my conjugate base because it's on the right side. That means this is a conjugate acid. What is it paired with? Conjugate acid with a base. And so then you can end up naming all of them. So let's go and look through this. So here's a base and an acid because, of course, you don't react a base with a base. You re react a base with an acid and acid-base reactions. Okay, again, what if, if you were asked to label all these as base, acid, conjugate acid, and base, how would you know where to start? Well, you may understand what's going to happen here, which one's going to donate the proton, which one's not. But you can always go back and double check your work by looking at what species do you know. You know from the Arrhenius definition that an OH is a base, and it's on the right side, so it's going to be a conjugate base. It can only react with a conjugate acid. So there will always be acid-base pair here, acid-base pair here. What species looks the most like this guy? That one does. So these two will be acid-base pairs, conjugate acid-base pairs. This one looks more, more like that species also, so this will be a conjugate acid-base pair also. Okay, that's just one way of looking at it other than which one's a proton donor, which one's a proton acceptor. Let's look at another one. I found this one on the internet and I thought that it showed a pretty good way of looking at it. Notice that this species here has got a negative sign on it already. So what is water going to be? Well, you have to look at this and you recognize it's got that H on the front. So this will be an acid. That means this one will be a base. Water will behave like a base this time. So it's going to go and snatch off this um, H, plus, H and so it'll become the hydronium ion. Well, that makes sense because these two are pairs. Since a base, this will have to be an acid. It'll have to be a conjugate acid. Okay. These two species are just almost alike, minus an H. And so that means that if it's minus an H, it donated one, didn't it? So anyway, so, so that means that this was the acid. So this will be the conjugate base. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to take a couple minutes and write out these two um, equations. And I want you to go ahead and um, write which one's an acid base, which one is a conjugate acid, conjugate base on both of these. And I'll return to that at the end of this video because I can't do any writing on this program. So I'll, I'll get back to that, I promise, towards the end of this. I will edit it in there. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, and do that. Pause it. And then I'm going to start talking about some more stuff. Okay. Okay, with Lewis' definition of an acid and base, in fact, that's even in your book too. It is located on page 455 and 456. It's interesting, it's talking about um, electron pairs. And we are not going to be testing in that this year. We're going to just go strictly with Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry definitions of an acid and a base. Okay, and then one last thing to talk about here. Uh, before strengths of acids and bases, um, I mentioned that water is amphoteric. In some of those equations, you could figure out whether water was an acid or whether it was in a base. But let's look at just water alone. You got a whole bunch of water in a beaker, okay, and it's switching from different ions. We know that it switches because it barely produces an electrolyte. 
okay? It takes a little bit of motion or else some kind of catalyst to get more of this to go perfectly like this, but it does produce some, okay? And look at that. It's going to snatch off one of these, make this guy an H3O+, plus, and what we got left, just an OH right here, okay? And so that's kind of showing how water can actually be an acid or a base. No, it would not be easy to do anything here with a conjugate acid-base pairs, figuring that out on this one. That would be very difficult. I don't know how. Okay, you'd have to label one as an acid and one as a base, and then match them up. Okay, one last subject. How do you determine whether it's a weak acid or weak base? And we talked about this, about the amount of ionization. Now, there are some typical ones that we use in our lab here. A nitric acid hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, chlorous acid. Anyway, those ones are typically strong acids that we have in our lab. And so I just wanted to show a, a brief showing of this. Now, since hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, okay, it depends on which acid that they are to know whether it's a strong or weak one. And I wouldn't ever expect you to memorize that. There is a data table in your in your book that you can go with on that. And we'll talk about that in a moment too. But we do know that a strong acid completely ionizes. So this will be all ions in the water, um, except for what else is water that's left in there, they'll all ionize. So they will conduct electrical current very easily. Weak acids, much less than 100% ionization. And a typical one that we know is acetic acid or else the component in vinegar. So when this one's in water, you're going to have mostly very few of these ions. It's mostly going to be the whole molecule in here. These whole molecules do not conduct electricity. It's only the ions that do. That's why we knew that, that this one was a weak electrolyte because it does not completely ionize, so we can't see the ions in the water. Okay, strong bases. 100% dissociation in water again, too. Dissociation means that they separate. They don't associate with each other, so they are separated into ions. Oh, boy, this isn't easy to see here, but NaOH is lye. It is our strong base that we use in our lab the most, and it separates completely into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Another typical one would be like what we use in, the, in our barns or in... Um, outhouses out a hunting land or something like that is slaked lime and lime um, helps tone down that urine smell. Anyway, here is what it looks like in water and it becomes CaOH and that's a very strong base. It will completely ionize. Weak bases, less than 100%. So like ammonia, that's that one that we were talking about right here. This guy right here is a weak one. It won't have very few ions in there mostly molecules, so it won't conduct electricity very well. You do have a table of these in your book. Oh, goodness, what page is this on? Let me look. I'll put, put. It is on page 459 in your book. I Again, I do not expect you to memorize these things. This is just a resource for you if you would ever need to look up if it's a strong acid or a strong base. And one last reminder that water is amphoteric. It can be ha behave as an acid or a base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and post a couple of questions about um, those two. Let me find them. There we go. These two right here. I'm going to post those a question about those, and I want you to um, to answer them and um, and give me some feedback on that. Okay. And I will see you next time I see you. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow online. Bye-bye.